Hey everybody, welcome back to Off The Cuff Reviews. My name is Alex and today I have a special new video. We're gonna be talking about mid 90s. So let's get into it. So today is going to be a light rants episode. If you guys have seen the other two light rants episodes that I did, uh, it's just a series that I have on this channel where I rant about things. The other two were about a movie and a TV show. This one's going to be about a movie, but it's not always going to be about movies. This is actually gonna have some other elements grouped into it. But the reason why I'm gonna be talking about mid 90s, four years after it came out, is not because I just saw it, uh, but it's because of some recent developments that happened with one of the main producers of the movie. There's another movie I, I'm going to also kind of group into this, which is called North Hollywood. I have not seen that movie, but it is a very similar movie to mid 90s, except it's just not directed as well because well, we'll get into it. <laughs> so let me preface this by saying that I am a skateboarder through and through. I grew up skateboarding. I always skated because it was counterculture. I would literally skate by myself because I didn't have many friends growing up. So I would just go out there and skate all day long. I would just skate, I would skate for like, a few hours, come inside, go back out, skate again. I would Then I would find friends who skated and I was never good. I was never great. There's literally no, there's not gonna be any clips of me skating online because I was never that good. But I will have, I do want to tell you that I literally still do skate. I skate now, I have a skateboard, I still skate. Not good, literally ate shit the first time I came here, uh, it's, you know, to, to start live, when I moved here to start living with my fiance, um, I literally skated one of the first nights I was here and uh, ate shit right in front of her. Great, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, like I literally still skate. So this that's where this rant is gonna kind of focus. And there's going to be elements about the movie um, and the production and the press and, and Jonah Hill and the whole entire thing and, and what my thoughts are on it. I, I feel like there's, there's, also, there's already um, videos by very popular people on YouTube about this specific situation that has come about with one of the uh, producers of mid nineties, but I wanted to kind of talk about the, the movie aspect of, of this specifically because it's not really being brought up. And uh, maybe, maybe it's just me, maybe it's just speculation and whatever. I guess this is all alleged. This is all like my, me putting the dots together, but I feel like this is pretty credible. Let's dive in and talk about it. So mid 90s is a movie about the skateboarding culture and um, like underground culture. It's basically a, a coming of age movie where this kid is trying to find who he is truly. Um, and it's like, you know, surrounded with the skateboarding culture. It's produced by A24, it's distributed by A24. And the press, at least, surrounding this movie was, it made it seem like this movie was very authentic. Jonah Hill wrote and directed it. It's his directorial debut, and he claims that this is a look at, well, this is an authentic look at what it's like growing up in Hollywood being a skater. I'm not gonna sit here and like bash Jonah Hill whether he was a skater or not a skater. I feel like people have had like speculation about how like truly authentic it is. I'm not gonna really go into that and, and go after him about that. But what I will say is the fact that this movie is definitely not as authentic as they're making it seem. Yes, the elements in the movie, especially down to the clothes they're wearing, the shoes, everything is really like appropriate for the time period. Totally get that. A, a lot of like the things that they were doing in the movie wa was really like appropriate for that time period, totally. But what I am disputing is how they were going on a press run and talking about the movie. And they were making it seem like, especially with the casting choices, that everything was very organic and authentic. Like as if Jonah Hill straight up rolled up to a skate park, started picking skaters up. I bought that for years. I literally gave mid nineties a higher score than what I was going to give it because I thought it was at, it was really authentic. And it is an authentic portrayal of the culture 
but it's not authentic in the business practices behind the scenes. And that's where the rant comes in. It's not what you think it is. It's not like Jonah Hill literally rolled up on a skateboard or rolled up to a skate park and started, was like, hey, Sunny Soldier, yo, oh, man, you're a great skater. Come over here. Let's, let's get you in an audition. No. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the main producer on this movie is actually a guy named Mikey Alfred. Mikey Alfred is a skateboarder. I mean, if that's what you want to call him. I, listen, I wasn't a great skater. So if he skates, whatever. I'm going to call him a skateboarder because he skates. I skate. I'm not good. So I, I would consider myself a skateboarder. So I'm going to call him a skateboarder. I'm not going to be that disrespectful. Um, not as disrespectful as some of the other guys on here. So for the casting, the, the cast and crew, including Jonah Hill, um, literally said that like one skater met Jonah like skating at a skate park and then J J uh, then they met Mikey also just there and then they met J like then they all just kind of clicked and then they started bringing in other skaters. When in reality, and this is my own contention here, this is my own opinion, I guess, but this is where my research has led me. Mikey Alpha had a bigger part in the casting than you think, considering everybody that was casted in the movie besides Lucas Hedges, literally everyone, Ryder McLaughlin, Sonny Soldrick, Olin, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, all those skaters, Nikel Smith, all of the skaters were literally on Mikey Alfred's skate team. Like the skate team that Mikey Alfred owns, which is not really a skate team. He calls it a film studio. And in fact, he calls it a teen film studio, even though he's like 30. So I wanted to talk about how the fact that they made it seem like Jonah Hill literally rolled up to a skate park and started picking skaters up. When in reality, it was more like Mikey Alfred probably wanted to make a movie like this pitched it around Hollywood. My thing is that since Mikey Alfred was a producer and one of, pretty much one of the main producers on the film and all of the people, the cast and the crew for the movie was literally skaters that were on his skate team. Makes me believe that it was a little bit more like Mikey had a little bit of more of a hand in this movie than you think. They made it seem like it was all Jonah Hill and Jonah Hill was coming up with this idea and they just started pitching it around. No, I think it was the other way around. I think it was, or may, maybe, tr maybe truly, listen, maybe that's just speculation. Maybe Jonah Hill had a little bit of an idea to do this skate video, a skate movie, started pitching it around Hollywood and then somehow got to Mikey Alfred. And when I say somehow, let's just say he has connections. And he doesn't have connections because it's all organic or authentic. He has connections because his mom was the assistant for one of the executives named Robert Evans, who worked at Paramount and produced the Godfather movies, true, the original True Grit, the original Italian job, all of like the big movies back in the day. She worked for him for 40 years <laughs> and built up wealth doing that. And he basically is a privileged kid who comes from wealth. He is not like coming from the slums of North Hollywood that like where he claims. He, he, whether he grew up in North Hollywood or not, I'm not saying he did or he didn't. But I'm just saying like, yeah, maybe his dad did construction, but his mom was literally working for fucking Paramount, okay? You can't tell for an executive at Paramount. You can't tell me that he doesn't have connections because of that. He does. It's just inevitable. Which, and great, cool. He has connections. That's great. He can do his passion and what he wants to do. That's all great. I totally support that. And I'm not going to throw shade at him for that. But it's, when you say, like, when you act like you're Drake... Like when, when you know how Drake made a song and he's like, I came from the bottom, now I'm here. And he's like, oh yeah, like I literally built this up myself, even though he was literally an actor on Degrassi in Canada before he ever rapped. Come on. He didn't build shit. Same with Mike Alfred. They're frauds. They're frauds. They just lie and you guys eat it up. And I'm not really sure why, but I, I didn't even know who Mikey Alfred was when this movie came out. I literally bought into the press where they were like, yeah, like they just organically met all these people and then they started bringing them down for audition. No, that's not what happened. There's no way that's what happened. And that's clear because he literally made a movie called North Hollywood starring Miranda Cosgrove and Vince Vaughn. And it's literally basically like a mid-90s movie, but it was just really directly bad. I didn't watch it because... 
fucking it sounds like it's garbage but um <laughs> and i just i just have no interest in really watching it because it looks and sounds like it's garbage and no matter how much i like vince vaughn i'm not gonna watch that it's just that like mikey alfred directed north hollywood he didn't just produce north hollywood he directed it too and he wrote it so it's like he has like a little bit more going on. So let's shift gears a little bit in this rant and go into the Mikey Alfred being a fraud things and get into that because that's where, the reason why I even went back to look into the mid nineties thing is because I know that the people, when I was finding all this other stuff out about Mikey Alfred literally two weeks ago from Gifted Hater, cause I didn't even know this guy existed, when I found out all this shit and I looked into his company, Illegal Civilization, and I found out that Sonny Soljic and all the guys from the mid-90s were in and I was like, whoa, 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 well, let me go check this out and take a look. This doesn't seem like it was as gore organic as they said it was and also as authentic as they said it was. Let's talk about how Illegal Civilization in the bio of the Instagram literally calls themselves a teen film studio. A teen film studio. A teen film studio. Mikey Alfred is 30. He, no, he's like probably my age. He's probably like 28. But he's like around 30. And he's hanging out with teenagers. And only teenagers. And he doesn't just only hang out with teenagers. He exploits them to make his company bigger. And so here's the deal. So he was riding on this fame of like... Be, he, he was riding on this like mid 90s ride right so bang 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 mid 90s comes out and then boom illegal illegal civilization kind of blows up a little bit and people start looking into them and they're like okay this seems because everyone bought into the organic authentic um, coming from the mud like myself bullshit that whole narrative is all bs um but what actually truly happened is off the success of that he starts getting uh, skaters who are well more well known than the teenagers like Sonny Soljic like no one knew who Sonny Soljic was really until uh, mid 90s came out and he was really young uh, so he started recruiting more because they started becoming more well known because of the mid 90s thing two years later and there they have Alex Midler Kevin White Nikel Smith is still there and a few others and he actually ended up Mikey Alfred actually ended up making Alex Midler, Kevin White, and another guy pro for the team in 2020. Flash forward two years, and then all of the skaters in the May of this year, 2022, have left. Literally almost every skater, even the even the young skaters that aren't pro, the ones that are just, they're not even getting flow from him. They're just making skate videos for him, and he's paying them in weed and food, which he is then barbarian, bar bombarding them for money for. It's just, oh my God, this whole entire situation was so frustrating to watch. And he's basically tanking his entire career Kanye West style. He, they flash forward. So he, he starts literally printing boards for Alex Midler and Kevin White and, and the other pro skater. And then he claims in, in May of 2022, they all left uh, because they claim he didn't pay them any money for anything. He claims what happened was when he initially started Illegal Civilization, which was literally back in like 2013, 2014, he had tons of money to start paying skaters that the money just came out. Of, and, and, the, and over time, he got more and more money. So when he made skaters pro, he was going to start paying them. And he claims he did pay them for a little bit until the money ran out. But in reality, they claim they were never paid at all for their entire time with the company. So flash forward to now, they have a new, so Illegal Civilization has a new skateboard part coming out. It's a new skateboard video and they're promoting it everywhere. They put out a vlog where it's a skateboarding vlog and it's literally like 12 year olds and 14 year olds. And some of them looked a little bit older, but like not that much older, like 16, 17, but most of them looked young, like 14. And he's like giving these kids weed. He's he's like get, buying them food and hanging out with them. They're doing like destructive things. They're, the video that they put out was literally called We Robbed Somebody. Even though like it wasn't like a real like robbery. It was just 
some bit they came up with. And it's just, here's the deal. They're doing all this thing, all these things, and then Gifted Hater, who is a guy on YouTube who I will link down below, he made a video. He's made videos about Mikey Alfred in the past, but he made a video um, reacting to this new video, this new vlog from Illegal Civilization, and he basically like like annihilated this video he tore it apart and the video had he literally was in the video he was literally going over comments all these negative comments for, because they were he was already getting a shitload of dislikes a shitload of horrible comments and he was just kind of you know doubling down on all these comments and you know reacting to the video which he has the right to do after he did that it started sending like a lot of hate towards illegal civilization in the dms of everywhere so Mikey Alfred decided to go on the verified Instagram page and start just dumping all this nonsense and defending himself horribly and calling skaters out. And so these skaters basically were like, we're done. We're done with this. We're not, we don't even want to be a part of this video anymore. This is, this is horseshit. We don't want anything to do with this. He starts bashing the skaters because the skaters are, are dropping like flies off the team. And one of the skaters decides to ask for the clips that he like, of him skating that they filmed for this new skateboard video that they have coming out. It's not out yet. Mikey Alfred said no, uh, basically. And what's his face? The, the the skater. I don't know any of the skaters' names. I don't follow any of them. They're they're like they're they're just little kids to me. So I'm not. I don't know. I don't know who you are. Sorry. I don't know your names. But they, they start basically asking him for the clips. And Mikey Alfred texts one of them and says, it's going to cost you $700,000 because I get paid $100,000 at least every time I grab the camera. Which is not true. And nobody in the skateboarding industry in the history of the world has ever made that much off of a skate video of just filming it. That's not what happens in the skateboarding world. Like it's not as lucrative as you guys think. Most skateboarders are like living in like shitty housing. They're bare, they're, okay, yeah, they don't have to pay. They, they might not have to pay for their boards. They might not have to pay for their shoes if they're lucky enough to get a shoe sponsor. If they get flow for shirts or they get hats or they get pants, they're lucky if they get any of that. And if they do, then okay, they don't have to spend expenses on clothing, but they still have to buy food. They have to do other things. So it's like, yeah, like they're not going to be making like a great living in skateboarding. You know, it, it's especially even big brands now are still not really paying these skaters. Like you really have to like sell out to like make a lot of money. So he literally asks this kid for a $700,000 and I'm not joking, 700K. And then when he's basically like, I don't fucking have 700K, the kid um, decides to then make a shirt the black shirt it says 700k and release it as merch and he's like oh yeah like i want to profit off this now because fuck you um so he's like i'm not gonna be on the skate team i don't want my videos you you're not gonna give me my videos so i want some type of compensation i'm gonna profit off you so after that happened uh mikey alfred went on this instagram rant which is still up it's not even in a story it's literally on his page right now um, it's like one of his, it's literally one of his posts. It's one of the posts that's just like a skateboard in promotion of the video that's coming out. But then like if you click, like you, they, there's a whole, a whole bunch of slides. Like if you slide to the next one, there's videos. Calling the one kid racist because Mikey Alfred's black, but the kid that he's calling racist is not white. And then he's going after a Jewish kid, calling him a Nazi, like it's the bad. It's like Kanye West style bad. Like it's conspiracy theory, Kanye West delusional, crazy shit bad. Flash forward to today, Janko Magazine, which is one of the bigger skateboarding magazines. I mean, they're not big, but they're they're a reputable skateboarding magazine in, in the skateboarding industry. And they put out an interview, which they did with Mikey Alfred that they did recently. And he wasn't the only one that they did an interview with. They interviewed Kevin White, which was one of the skateboarding, the pro skaters for the team. They also interviewed the main filmer. And the filmer is like, okay, well, well 
I was like gonna still work. I was. I thought I was like still working with him. Like regardless of this, I know the situation is crazy, but I was just trying to stay out of the the limelight with it. I was just gonna try to take a back seat because I wasn't involved. And then he just threw me under the bus. He literally threw the filmer when they were texting about the seven hundred k. And there's like screenshots of it all over. You can go check out Gifted Haters uh, video down below. And about the whole situation, he he talks about it and he shows the screenshot of these texts where the kids like. Where he's like, oh, I want 700K to like this like 16, 15 year old kid. And so in that text, he's like, he didn't just say he was getting paid 100 grand every time he picked up the camera. He was talking about the other guy, the filmer. And and the filmer is like, this is all bullshit. And I was still going to work. He literally was like, I'm just, he made it seem like he was going to still work with him. And then he just, he basically was like, hey, I want to buy the clips myself from you so I can give, so I can do what's right and give the clips to them. I want to pay for them. Can you give me a price? blocked mike alfram just blocked him so then we flash forward we get to kevin white's uh interview kevin white basically reiterates everything everyone else said and talks about how um he, he even though he kind of like was speculated as leaving the team earlier this year um he still kind of stood by him and was like still repping him up until literally this this interview today and he was like well, I was still standing by his side because I know like I was with him and I know he's going through a lot of personal stuff, but I cannot stand by somebody who's pushing all this hatred and all this crazy stuff about like, you know, Nazis and Jews and Jewish people. And it's just, he's like, listen, I can't do that. I have to cut ties. Like I can't be a part of this brand anymore. So he puts out a statement on his own Instagram. He's like, I'm not, I'm not a part of the brand. I'm sorry. Like, I'm thankful for what they did for me, but I'm not a part of this brand anymore. So then they actually interviewed Mikey Alfred in response. Mikey Alfred's response, I'm gonna link it down below. It's the Jankum interview. He does not get make himself look good in this interview, man. Let me tell you, and there's no vi video footage, or else I would in insert it here somewhere. It's just like a, an interview on the website. A written interview and he does not make himself seem look good and it looks like Jankum was trying like the the whoever wrote whoever was interviewing him was trying to still like play on his side a little bit to get more info out of him at least and was like literally like so in support like literally oh like what do you what do you say to all the haters man like what what do you say about He's like, well, what about these claims? Like, what do you say about this bullshit? Like, would the, I know these people are crazy, but like, what do you say to them? What do you say in response to them? Like, I know you're like saying they're, he's literally like, he's just like, there's literally like some of them where there's not even an actual real response. It's just like, he's like, well, because he was like, well, I, I started with a big pot of money when I made illegal civilization and that's where all the money came from. And then when, and I told them that's where the money was coming from. And then they would have to start selling boards after, after a little while, but then they stopped and they just didn't want to sell boards. And that was on them. It is what it is. And so the interviewer was like, okay, yeah, yeah, totally. It is what it is with them. Like that's bullshit. But what about where did you get this money? Like, how did you make this money? His answer was, I've always been popular i've always uh, he's like um my brand has always been around and it's always made money bitch where where has it made money like it wasn't really that successful to begin with you are just rich and you're privileged you know you're a privileged rich kid who came from the suburbs of like around hollywood somewhere and you're trying to claim that you came from like the the, like the hard ghetto part but you didn't my guy your mom was the assistant to one of the biggest ex executives at paramount like of all time so yeah no you uh weren't you know this like kid who was just growing up in this shitty scene you were a rich, privileged kid. So Nikkel Smith was in the movie, and he's a really good skateboarder. He was in the movie in the mid-90s, and he is a really good skateboarder, but and he grew up with Mikey Alfred. Nikkel actually was in, and he collaborated with the group Odd Future. And you guys may know Odd Future with Earl Sweatshirt um, and Tyler, the creator specifically. So... Nikkel, obviously, because he was collaborating and he was like in the group basically with them, he introduced Mikey Alfred to Tyler, the creator. 
that's how Mikey Alfred also started getting into bigger roles like making like almost like he was like making a name for himself he was the filmer he was the videographer for tyler the creator he was hanging with them he wasn't just he wasn't just filming them he was hanging out with them too and that plays a big part in it so he was like not just their filmer but he was their friend and so he made this entire you know he's so he starts building up his career and he was doing a good like a job at doing that kind of stuff but he wanted to be more he wanted to do this like skate brand and he thought he was like more i don't know he's making it seem like it was more authentic than it was like he like he's making it seem like he's like a drake situation like it, it, it no it literally is a drake situation he's making it seem like it's not like he he made it himself but in reality it's you know drake it's same with Drake. Like Drake claimed that he just built his entire career himself, but bro, you are you forgetting that you were an actor before you were ever Drake? Your name was Aubrey, and you were an actor on Degrassi. That's how people knew you, and then you started rapping, and then you started becoming popular as a rapper. That's not the same thing as making it from like being like this like poor no name kid. Like when you're like an actor on like the biggest teen show of all time and now you're a huge rapper. Like it's it's not the like that's like Miranda Cosgrove being like, oh, yeah, I made myself. I'm the, I, I came from nothing. Yeah, maybe before you were on fucking Nickelodeon. Like, come on, you know, like before that, maybe. But that's not the same thing as like making it yourself and like when you're like trying to be something else. Like when you like it's not authentic is what I'm saying. And the reason why we're the reason why I am specifically hitting on those points of it not being authentic and it being a sham is because, first of all, I gave mid 90s a higher score than I was going to give it because I thought it was authentic and, and organic when I found out it wasn't. Now the score is going to be lower because the movie wasn't that good. But from an organic, authentic standpoint, yeah, it could be. It, it, you could be like, okay, well, it's a, you know, they, they, they were trying. No, that's not it. It's literally a like industry plant type of thing like, where everybody knew each other. It was like a planned thing. And it was just like, a, like a, you know what I'm talking about? Like a legal civilization was just like, this was what they were doing. They were trying to get people in the, into the movie industry. And that's what they were doing here. It's not, and, and they're trying to capitalize off of the popularity of being part of mid nineties and the authentic part of mid nineties. Now he's just trying to hire teenage teenagers to do films, but they're gonna be skaters first. They're gonna, they're filming these skate parts, but now they don't wanna give the parts the clips to the kids and now and in and, and, and here and here's the magnum this is the magnum opus this is this is the big reveal at the end right this is this is going to be the end of the video this is going to be the big um you know conclusion here pretty much every single fucking person that was associated with illegal civilization is gone there, uh, according to Mikey Alfred, there's two kids that I have never heard of or anyone else. He calls them homies um, that are working with him still on this skateboard video. But he claims that he's going to be shelving all the other kids' clips and, and nobody's working with him anymore. Everyone's gone. Filmer's gone. Other skaters are gone. And that's about it. And before I get off, another thing, just to, to really rail this point home about how unauthentic and, and cringe this is and, and, and how fraudulent this is, Gifted Hater pointed out how this guy's like posting videos and, and video, like, I mean, pictures on his story and on, on his feed of him in all these like like expensive outfits. He's wearing boat shoes. He's he's like wearing all, like all these like 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 I said expensive outfits. He's literally he doesn't even wear like skating shoes. He doesn't fucking he barely skates. You know, he's he's hanging out with like Dave Chappelle and other people like rich executives, Robert Evans who I think I mentioned earlier in the video. He's literally like or, or he he hung out with Robert Evans. I don't think Robert Evans is alive anymore, but he 
hangs out with these people and and then he's like and he goes like to paris and he goes here and he goes there and he's like but but then it's like where's the money coming from because you're claiming that you don't have enough money to pay the skaters because they're not selling the boards and and you're also just like in these like rich outfits in these rich cities and you're claiming that you're not privileged and that these 15 16 year old kids are the privileged ones and it's just not the case. So that's my rant. That's where I want to leave it. I just feel like it, it, wool was pulled over our eyes here and they sold us on this like authentic journey where we were supposed to care about these characters and care about the, the journey of Jonah Hill making this and that it's supposed to be like a really accurate representation when everything was a fucking lie from the beginning. Where does it end? I mean, why are why is Hollywood, why is everyone just trying to sell us products sell us movies sell us entertainment that's not even authentic where and but they're claiming it is and that's the problem because they're getting people to buy into it buy it watch these movies by claiming it's authentic and still running with the idea that it is even afterwards and it's like we know it's not now we know now we know now everybody knows you guys are all frauds mike alfred fraud be real with us be real the skateboarding community deserves better. That's all I have to say because people, there are really cool, authentic, creative people in the skateboarding community that are just being pushed to the side because skateboarding is like still frowned upon, but it's an Olympic sport. Huh? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. But that's where I'm going to leave it. And uh, let me know your thoughts down below because that's what I love about these videos. I get to open up a discussion with you guys. Let me know if you guys are any skaters around here. Let me know how you feel about that. And uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know down below. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Stay safe, everybody.